Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Today's video is all about some problems. Um, first and foremost, the Lurgy has visited the Aquarium Adventures house over the past couple of weeks. Every member of this household has had some form of sickness or illness. All the kids have had days off school. I've had man flu. Um, yeah, it's not been a fun time around here. But hopefully we've turned a corner, we're back at it. So apologies that we didn't get a video out last week. Hopefully we can make up for it soon. Try and get it in early this time. If you're interested in this kind of thing, you've got aquariums, you know someone that got aquariums, click that subscribe button. Um, you might find something interesting even if you don't like this video. There'll be something in the future that tickles your fancy. Share it with your friends. Um, stick it on a Facebook group if there's anything in here that's helpful in any way whatsoever. That'd be really appreciated. Thank you very much. So, we've had some deaths. I guess that's the only way to look at it. Um, there's no good way, there's no way to sugarcoat it, it is what it is. I've lost the fancy goldfish, the redhead, or the red cat Miranda, or redhead as my kids are calling them. Um, and we've lost all the rainbow fish from this tank. Happened at different times. Um, this happened, so if, I think it was two weeks ago, something like that. And then maybe four or five days later, all the rainbow fish. So it was a fairly short period of time, but it wasn't connected, as far as I can tell. Um, and it's unexplained deaths, which is the worst type of death that you can have. So I'm sure it is my fault, I just haven't quite figured out why yet. And um, the only thing I can think of is that I did do a fairly large water change on this because I was feeling rough. Um, I'd let things go a little bit, so I did quite a large water change, maybe 30%, something like that. Um, but then it didn't touch the shrimp or the plecos that were in here, it was just the rainbow fish. I did the same sort of water change on a lot of tanks, nothing else was affected. I don't know, I don't know what went on at all. The goldfish, I mean that is something that these fancy goldfish are prone to, they are prone to bloat and to swim bladder issues, whether I just didn't get there in time, but it was only kind of 24 hours from me noticing it to me starting to take action. And then 24 hours later it was dead. So a bit gutted, um, but yeah, what more can you do? You just got to pick yourself back up and get started again. Um, what is the saying? I think it's a Mike Tyson quote, something like, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. And um, so this is my punch in the face. So I need to take a little bit of stock, take a step back, do some rethinking. I had this just about where I wanted it, I had my various breeding projects going on. Thankfully I've still got my rams, two sets of rams, I've still got the gold and white cloud mountain minnows, and I've still got the plecos all set up and ready for breeding. Um, yeah, I just need to come up with some new and interesting ideas. And in terms of what else is going on here, we've talked about this before, where I've got my large uh, ancestress or bristlenose pleco breeding tank. Um, it's doing fine. Um, seeing a lot of kind of breeding behaviour and getting them all fed up. They're all looking really good condition wise. But it was this tank here. I, I just put this pot in here just because I had it lying around. I played called dug a little cave underneath it and laid a bunch of eggs. So all the effort that I've gone to getting this tank set up and it was this one here that um, managed to get over the line. And again, that was another consideration. Is it something to do with these plecos starting to breed in here? Did that kick off? Did one of the bristlenose plecos go on a murderous spree? I just don't know. Um, but it was literally one evening, came in, did all the water changes, next morning came down, all dead. Anyway, so that's a bit of an update on what's going on down in the fish room. Still got the rainbows here, so I'll just, instead of moving these and splitting them between the upstairs display tank, I'll just start this off as my breeding colony for the rainbow fish. So I do still really like these fish, they're really good looking fish, and especially when they get to a decent size, they've got a really good shimmer to them. And so that'll do it for the fish room, let's go back upstairs. So hopefully we can look forward to a few more positive things in the near future. Um, some exciting things that have happened in the, the time gone past is this turned up. Looks a bit like a house brick, I guess you would say. Um, this was sent to me by the Pond Guru. Check him out, his channel up here. This is the, well, I don't know what it's called actually. I think it's called the Bio Home Brick. If it isn't called that, it probably should be. This is just a sample. He sent me two of these. The funny thing was the, 
the postman turned up at the doors and said, here you go lad, God, what the hell you got in here, it feels like two bricks. Turns out it was indeed two bricks, so I've got two of these. Um, these are just samples, this isn't what the finished product will look like, but he just wanted to send me them to have a look at them and try them out. Um, I think, you'll notice these designs here, I think the idea behind these, I think he said this, was that these are designed to be in a sump, probably for a marine tank to make use of these things, because they're frag, frag plugs. So you stick your plugs in there, so you get some filtration, and somewhere to stick your marine frags, um, which seems like a great idea. Um, they're not on sale yet, as far as I know. Um, check out the Pond Guru's channel if you want to know more about them. Um, he did send me some stuff, in fact, let me have a quick look. Bear with me, Connor. Yeah, so he did send me some information. I think he's planning on selling these for about 30 quid. Um, they are going to be rated for something like 150 litres per brick. So no exorbitant claims like you get with some of these other brick type um, filtration methods. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a slight tinge to these. The idea is that they will be grey, um, that he was just refining the firing process. I don't think it makes any difference to the filtration capacity of them. But yeah, they're an interesting product. I can imagine a few of these stacked up will do quite well and give you some quite um, interesting options if you're running a sump, for instance. So keep an eye out for them in the future. The other thing is, is I don't know whether I'm a genius or an idiot, but if I can find them anywhere. Consider this type of tank, for instance. Consider aquascaping scissors. So you get these scissors which are like this. Big long scissors. They're always like this. With a bit of a curve to the end of them. The idea being that you can get in there and start trimming your plants. Now if you've got a kind of, or you're going for a, a bedding plant like this. And you want to keep it low. The idea is that you get in there and then you can snip this like this. But when you've aquascaped it and you've got sticks and rocks and things all in the way. It's doing my head in because you can't physically fit. You can't get in there easy enough to get the angle you want to get a nice straight cut. So I was either chopping away like a drunken barber or just missing the whole thing out completely. So I was looking for some options and I found these online. And I, these aren't the perfect option, but I think they're in step in the right direction. I'll put a link in the description. I probably don't recommend that you get these. Um, and look for maybe a stainless steel option or something like that because these do rust if you don't uh, clean them or dry them properly but they're thread snippers they're called and they're like razor sharp little tiny things and you can get in there any space that you can fit your hand in you can get these in and you can lower it down at any angle that you want and just get in snip 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 perfect of course you could just use smaller scissors and I have tried nail scissors and things like that in the past but just the action of getting your fingers and thumbs in there it's just a lot more compact with these and I find it anyway a little bit easier to use. I find it so much easier to do that. Um, so just a couple of little things to show you. Hopefully in the next video we'll be back on track, we'll have some better news, we'll have some breeding news, maybe get in a few live streams in the coming weeks. So make sure you click that subscribe button, make sure you click that notification bell. And let me know in the comments what's going on in your fish keeping life and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, bye bye.